Welcome to the final day of this slide out kitchen build. Hopefully, unless something goes catastrophically wrong, in the last two episodes, we've built a 1.7 meter slide out frame for the kitchen that supports 227 kilos, installed a storage cupboard, and made up some bench tops. So on the list today is gonna to be to make up two side panels to block these sides in and make them look a little bit neater. And those panels will also have some doors to access this cupboard underneath. I'll get all three of those bench tops reinstalled, and I'll also be uh, installing the new cooker on the slide out section here. Um, then I'll make up a bit of a false front so it looks a bit nicer when it's all closed in and I'll explain when we get to it but I will need to also make a small drop down table on the front here as well. Because you know, 1.7 meters is just not long enough. Um, also need to sort out some sort of food storage section on the top here. But first things first, let's get these side panels sorted. So I'm unhappy with how our bench tops have come out with the varnish. Um, Daniel did a shit job. No, <laughs> no. Uh, they just didn't come out as well as I wanted. I'm not happy with the finish. And Daniel coated one of our little bench tops in this vinyl wrap from Kmart. So I've decided to take over before he puts these bench tops in and vinyl wrap them in the same stuff. Meanwhile, Daniel is working in the background there doing our carpeted panels. So yeah, excuse this interruption while I make something a little bit more up to my standards. Well, that took a little bit more time than I was expecting to get those side panels made up, but they're all installed and I'm pretty happy with the result. I had to make up some custom brackets to get that nice flush finish, but I think it was worth doing that to ensure they're gonna slide in with no dramas at all. The cupboard doors have been installed on the back section here as well, and I just glued some magnets on the top there so when they close, the doors get held shut. If you can hear some noise in the background, that's Bianca working away on our bench tops, giving them a, a much nicer finish than my dodgy varnish job. And the next job for me is gonna to be to install the front panels. Now, this is gonna involve some pretty uh, careful measurements, because essentially it's gonna be three separate panels that when the whole unit closes up, they've all gonna meet each other perfectly. So that's the next job for me.
So I lied and we didn't quite get this project finished yesterday, but we got it really, really close. So the next job is to create a bit of a carpeted panel to cover the cooker when it's not in use. And I've just set the cooker in place to show you a bit of a problem I'm trying to overcome. So essentially with the way I've designed the cooker to go, so it opens up this direction, the gas inlet is right here. So if I was to cover that with a carpeted panel, obviously we can't access the gas inlet. The obvious solution is just to drill a hole in that front panel so we can access the gas inlet behind. But I was thinking about it and I don't really want to have a panel permanently mounted here. It just seems like it'll get in the way when the cooker's in use. Uh, so my solution is to put that panel on hinges which I've pre-installed and that way when I want to use the cooker, I just fold that panel down and out of the way and it sort of becomes a bit of an extension bench top. Now to support that drop down table, I've bought this 6.3 millimeter steel tube and basically I'm gonna drill two holes in the front section here, two holes in the support beam underneath and these will kind of uh, slide through those holes, one on either side. I'll then attach this uh, aluminum angle to the front of that and when it's all kind of uh, done, it will sit nice and flush like this. Then when I wanna drop that table down, all I have to do is pull that out and then fold the table on top. So not really sure how it's gonna turn out, but let's give it a go. My drop down table is fully installed and I'm just waiting on the glue to dry on those magnets before I can give it its first official test. In the meantime, I thought we'd get this cooker secured to the slide out platform. Uh, to do that, I've already removed the panel that sits on top here and I've got myself three bolts. Now the middle one is longer than the outside too because that one's going to go straight through the uh, support beam underneath for maximum strength. And I've got two smaller ones that will go on the edges. Uh, it's going to be pretty painful drilling holes in a brand new cooker, but it's going to just achieve that slide out cooker design that I'm after. So without further ado, let's get to it. And with that, the entire slide out kitchen is officially complete. So I got that cooker bolted down to the platform. That is very, very secure. And my little drop down table worked out way better than I was expecting. Essentially to use it, all we do is slide out the support from underneath. It's got some stoppers to only let it go to the correct position. And then just push that panel down and it rests on that uh, support underneath. When I finish cooking, it's just a matter of lifting this panel up and it's got some magnets that hold it in place in the upright position. I can then push this bracket out of the way and slide the whole kitchen back inside. So all that's left to go for this kitchen fit out is gonna be some food storage areas up the top here. For that, I was wanting to use those little slide out drawer modules, but we have been down to Kmart and Bunnings and we weren't overly happy with uh, their offerings in that department. So I'm gonna to head to Big W to see what they've got. Big W was a success. They had a bunch of storage tubs that all fit together quite neatly. So I bought a few of those and I built up a basic food storage area in the setup. And with that, V1 of this kitchen build is officially complete, which I'm super excited about. But you might be wondering why the canopy door is still shut. Well, this has been the biggest DIY project I've ever undertaken. So you better believe you're getting a montage.
Well, now that it's all finished, or maybe you've just skipped to this point in the video, in which case, welcome, and let me give you guys a full tour of the new kitchen build. So up the top here, we've got a set of five removable drawer units. I suppose time will tell how durable they're gonna be, but should get us by for the next few trips at least. Um, I've literally just plonked them on a piece of non-slip matting. I've then screwed a piece of wood on top to kind of uh, lock them all in place. And then I've strapped that whole unit around this main kitchen bench using a ratchet strap. And now that is firmly in place and not going anywhere. To keep these drawers from coming out on us out on the tracks, I've just added an elastic cord to the front that loops around a screw in the bottom of both those modules. That way you just push the elastic cord out of the way when you arrive at camp and you've got nice easy access to your food. And I'm sure at some point in time, I'm gonna to forget to put this elastic back on and my food's gonna go everywhere. This definitely isn't a long-term solution. I know famous last words. Um, I kind of just had to throw something quick together to get us by for this next trip, but you can definitely expect to see me revisit this space and build something a little bit more custom in future. Moving forward, we've got our small little bar top area here. It's actually a pretty reasonable size. Here's a uh, standard dinner plate for reference. Not one I'd normally take camping, the China dinner plate from inside, but you'll see it comfortably fits in that area with a bit of room to spare. However, when I want a little bit more room, I just slide out my one meter bench top, which just keeps going and going and going and going. There we go. So this is our one meter by half meter solid bench top. It's on those 227 kilo runners, so Strength is no issue at all. I could effectively sit on this thing quite comfortably. Uh, Bianca's done an awesome job of vinyl wrapping this bench top as well, which looks way better than my poor uh, varnishing attempt. Neither of us are very sure how durable this vinyl covering is gonna be. We're thinking it's probably gonna get scratched up quite easily and uh, might need replacing, but for the short term, it looks pretty awesome. And the way I've kind of designed this whole kitchen, it's like a two minute job to pull off all the benches recover them or we can go back to bare wood or put whole new ones on whatever we like uh, on the sides of the bench i have put some carpeted infill panels that are nice and strong and i guess could be useful for velcroing bits and pieces too as well and then on the tail section of the bench of course we have our storage cupboard under the sink to make the most of that uh, otherwise wasted space and there is a door on both sides so you can easily access that space whichever side you're coming from and something cool i just figured out if i try and close this drawer module with those cupboard doors open it just kind of snaps shut, which is uh, quite satisfying. Anyway, moving on to the end of this bench, we're not done yet, because on the very front is our slide out cooker. So I've gone for the Coleman Hyperflame stove once again. Uh, I just reckon they're fantastic stoves. It's what I had in the Rangers canopy setup for years and it worked flawlessly, except for those uh, adjustment knobs, but that's an easy fix as well. It's on its very own platform connected to these 700 mil locking draw runners from Bunnings, uh, and they're rated to 90 kilos, so plenty of strength for some big camping meals. Probably the biggest problem I had with mounting this stove here was that uh, the gas inlet is on the side here. The solution I've come up with is to put this panel on a bit of a hinge system. So this is essentially just a couple of steel rods that run through the frame of the cooker underneath here. I've added some stoppers so they can't come out past that point. I then put some aluminium angle on the front to give it a bit of structure. And the tabletop just kind of folds down and rests on that support. And being steel rods, it's actually like surprisingly strong. And I reckon when I'm cooking, that's going to be such a valuable bit of space to have, whether it's just resting a drink or a bottle of oil. Well guys, thank you so much for coming along and watching this build come to life. It certainly wasn't without its uh, challenges along the way, but they're all pretty fun to overcome and I'm very proud with the end result. I finished it just in the nick of time too, because there's about one day to go before we head off on our big adventure to Karajini and beyond. Uh, so I guess I better wrap up filming this video and go and pack my stuff. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.